Great. Well, it's lovely to see you, Janet. Um, thanks so much for coming over. Um, now, I've heard that Rafiki Tabo Foundation's got a cook-off going on. Yeah. What's that all about? Um, yeah, no, it's really exciting. So um, we just wanted to create a bit of fun in COVID and when people were still in partial lockdown. Um, so our fundraiser, Yana, came up with the idea of um, getting people to cook an African meal. Brilliant. Um, and uh, take pictures um, and share those pictures and just to create a bit of buzz. Um, and obviously as a charity there's always a fundraising objective as well so we also have asked people so it's free to take part um, but we're asking people to make a donation if they'd like to um, and that money will go towards supporting our food school food program called Eat Well to Learn in Uganda um, right. through which we provide a school meal every day um, for at least 70 children in a rural school Fantastic. Uh, which keeps them in, in school and well yes. fed and how is, I mean, is, I imagine lockdown creates um, huge pressure on the, the charity and all the work that's going on at the moment. Is it, what particularly is in your mind as you're working yeah. on this? Yeah, I mean, yes, huge pressure and all charity, which all charities are feeling because obviously people are less able to give, but also mm. uh, yeah. sponsored events aren't taking place. So it's just been quite devastating. Um, we're very fortunate at Rafiki that we have um, a lump sum investment that we draw dividend, d dividends down on. Okay. Um, so we know we can still cover the basics, um, mm. but you know there's still going to be a big shortfall. And in the meantime, we've um, obviously needed to respond to COVID in our three countries in Kenya, Uganda, and Lesotho, um, which has been extra costs that we hadn't budgeted for. Um, but we're really happy to have been able to. So we've been providing food packages for families of the children we support mm. um, because. They, most of them just lost income overnight as a result of lockdown being imposed quite harshly in those countries for good reasons. Yeah. Um, so, you know, all the informal traders, market traders, and, you know, people that are just making a, a, a shilling here or there, um, that just went overnight, any source of income. Um, and then coupled with that, the schools are closed, so um, the children are at home, so it's extra mouths to feed for those families as well. Yeah. Um, so we've been really, you know, um, pleased to be able to step in and help a lot of families and we're continuing that support as schools remain closed. So in Kenya they're going to stay closed now until at least January. Um, so we're really thinking through how we can continue that support. Yeah. Um, I was talking to, actually you asked what's on my mind, so I was talking to uh, one of our representatives in Kenya yesterday mm. um, and she's trying to find a way that we can get private tutoring for some of the um, street, former street children we support because um, some teachers now are able to offer that provided they can maintain social distancing okay. and provide masks and hand sanitizer, similar to here. Yeah, but, <laughs> um, but more difficult to arrange I, I imagine yes, working yeah, in Kenya. Exactly. You won't, you won't be able to order it online and have it no, delivered at home exactly. very in the same way. And, yeah, so goodness knows. Yeah. Um, but what really struck me was she was talking about the she's seen, so she lives in Thika, which is just outside Nairobi, and she said there's just been a massive influx of street children yeah. coming in from the slums to try and you know, beg on the streets, um, and she just said the chances of them, get, them getting back into school after this, yeah. you know, when schools reopen, are really slim because they'll have got used to making some money off the street, and see yeah. that as a better option than school. Me. And their parents probably won't be able to afford school fees <laughs> as a result, so it's just you know, we're so hard hit here, and it's been devastating mm. for so many people, but you just think of how much harder it is in countries with no furlough schemes, yep. no safety nets, um, no, yeah. no cushions for most we, people. And we don't see that very much, do we? we it's such really good, useful yeah. to have that. Yeah, yeah, no, and it's really hard hitting. In yeah. Uganda, um, our committee representative there was telling me that lots of girls are being um, married off rather oh, than being sent to school anymore because again the families are just mm. desperate and that's a way yeah. of getting some money into the family so mm. that's heartbreaking oh. as well ah oh, so sorry to <laughs> <laughs> um the other thing rafiki's been doing is we've been um supporting schools um because the schools are so dependent on um children paying or families of children paying fees mm. They're now unable to pay their teachers because obviously they can't charge fees because the school are yeah. closed. And again, our representative yesterday was saying lots of um, schools in Kenya are going to just have to close down because they can't survive. Yeah. Um, but we've been really pleased to be able to support our schools in Kenya and Uganda. Um, we're not paying the whole teacher's salary, but approximately yeah. half of their okay. salaries just so. It's a kind still. of a limited furlough scheme. Exactly. Just to, yeah. Just keep exactly. Them close. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that they can still feed their families. And, and 
this Gosh. one. So it's just far reaching. Yeah. yeah. Oh well thank you so much. It's really good to know to hear a little bit more about what's going on in different parts of the world. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um so coming back to the cook off. Yep. <laughs> Um, we had a great go. I had a good, lovely go to uh, yeah, Sally. Your yeah, cooked <laughs> you. First time I've had chapatis since we were actually in Voy with um, Liverson and Miriam. Bring back uh, memories. It did, um, <laughs> which was fantastic. Um, so uh, Layla did a lovely video yes, with yeah. her bean stew and yep. chapatis. Yep. And uh, is that on YouTube? Um, um, it's on YouTube. Um, Yes, I'd perhaps we can, you can post the links on there. Okay, we can, yeah, yes, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, yeah. That'll be really good. So yeah, good. there's a lovely video of um, Layla cooking. There's also a lovely video of, um, I didn't say we're so grateful to Prue Leith. Oh, um, yes. And I'm grateful to you, David, for introducing us to her, um, who is supporting the cook-off. Um, and she's, um, so one of the prizes from the cook-off is to uh, have a Zoom work, take part in a Zoom workshop with Prue. Fabulous. Um, and uh, I think she's offered up also a there you go. I've got signed a copy, of, copy her book. of her book. Brilliant. Um, and you know she's really helping us push it out on social media to reach a wider audience, which we really, really appreciate. Um, and there's Fantastic. a lovely clip of her talking about the cook-off as well. Excellent. Oh, well, I'll, I'll see if I can put a link or, or maybe include that in our service it tomorrow. Would be great. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And how long have got people got to enter the competition? So it closes next Sunday, uh, 26th of July. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. And. Yeah, just and we've had quite a lot of entries so far, um, but you know, obviously Still anyone else room for some more. cooking, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So um, have a go at that. Do the do your cooking, take the photos, post them, and get into the competition. Yep. That'd be fantastic. Amazing. Um, and uh, hopefully raise lots of money, which will be helpful to the uh, ongoing work of this amazing charity. So. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much, you. Janet. Thanks, David. That's brilliant.